Hi, it's Kate. I hope you are doing well and you are ready for some nice crafting. I will be doing tutorial for two elegant cards. They are very, very easy. The first step is prepare background. I took heavyweight mixed media paper. You can use watercolor paper. And I use those two great 3D embossing folders to emboss the papers. And I cut uh, rectangles from them. Now I'm making splatters or droplets just with water. And I will pour embossing powder over it. Embossing powder will stick at the places where the droplets are. It's... Uh, it's very easy and it's quite funny technique, uh, but you can see when you are heat uh, embossing it, heat set it, some of powder will fly away because, you know, water is not the same as uh, embossing ink. I'm making two cards in my video because uh, I wanted to show you new embossing powders just released this week so if you are looking in january they are now january 2021 they are now in shop so i will heat set it and uh, we will be playing later there's uh, another there are another steps i'm using distress oxide inks you can use any any inks which you like any color which you like this is the first time when I'm using Rustic Wilderness. It's it's really great color. And uh, the second distress oxides which I choose is Crackling Campfire. Also very nice. I'm going slightly over all embossed areas and all edges. And it will make a very interesting coloring of, of background just very lightly do not push just very very lightly like you are dry brushing or something like that do not push and uh, when i will color it i will also make some splatters it's it's not necessary step but this can add uh, another interesting uh, part of background this is something more and uh, i I like making splatters, but if you are more control crafter, don't make splatters. Step. Just skip this step. I will make them with both or at both card, card panels. I like to work on card panels because when I mess something, I can throw it away if it's not repairable. And I can start over and I'm not, not wasting card base. So usually at all my cards, I'm working at panels. Then I decide I need more vintage look. So I took another Distress Oxide vintage photo and uh, just here and there I, I applied color. Also around edges and at the embossed areas. Again, I'm not pushing. I'm going just very, very lightly. Distress Oxide, it's quite uh, pigmented. Very pigmented. <laughs> and uh, you have to go very lightly. But again, this step is not necessary. But I think the combination of all the colors which I choose today for cards, it's uh, great for embossing powder which <laughs> which I will be using later. Uh, of the camera I made also splatters with distress oxide. Now it's time to prepare our focal image. I choose uh, two stamps for from Tim Holtz stamp set called specimen and I will be doing heat embossing with new embossing powders. All materials are listed at the blog post or below video. I like to use my stamping platform because, uh, I don't know, I like it. You can stamp twice, 
you can be sure that your stamped image it's really crispy and nice and uh, I, I like it when you don't have stamp platform just stamp your way it's not necessary so here I am pouring embossing powder and you will see that uh, I probably probably touched paper too much so even when uh, wall embossing powders are anti-static when you touch paper too much uh, there is grease on our hands or our fingers and uh, the embossing powder stick at the places where your paper it's a bit dirty but absolutely no stress just take a brush and the places where you don't want to have powder brush brush it so for my next next image i decided to use anti-static powder because i knew that i touch paper too much and you will see that my next image i don't need to correct it's a very nice stamped and it will be very very nice focal point again i'm i'm stamping twice not necessary but i like to be sure and i'm uh, using for all my heat embossing i'm using quite heavyweight papers when you use papers which are not enough thick you can have uh, curling or waves at the paper so it's always better to use uh, some heavyweight paper it doesn't have to be watercolor i'm using watercolor paper because it's a bit yellowish and uh, it match my it matches my background but when you will be working on heavyweight white paper of course you will be doing stamping at white paper no <laughs> not at watercolor like I'm doing as I said I'm doing it because it matching matches my uh, background so I glued my panels to no card and the last step will be gluing butterflies I I don't like to use sentiments a lot so no sentiments for my card but if you like sentiments you can stamp at it it's absolutely up to you here i took just a pen and i'm trying to make some dimension for my butterfly again it's great that i had uh, heavyweight paper i can model it a bit if it's too heavy you can even spray a bit of water over it and uh, make your shape and uh, because I like dimensions on my cards, I will glue butterfly and mod with 3D foam tape. Just be careful, glue it in the middle. Do not glue wings, wings because you want to have that lovely shapes and not flat image. And uh, when you have good quality 3D foam tape, it's absolutely <coughs> okay to have it just in the middle of your image and the same step i'm making on the mo i think it's mot this this insect i'm i'm not a fan of insects but i like them on the cards and i think it's really great this combination of embossed embossed image and uh, embossed background and all distress uh, things I think uh, you can recreate many cards, not only in this vintage style, but you can use any ink, any embossing powder to create your card. But this effect of, of doing all the steps and the result, it's, I like it. So I hope you like my tutorial. If you like wall videos, do not forget to subscribe give us like and have a nice day day <laughs> thank you